Now we will uh, see the, the performance called Ikal Dance of Bachao Laut from Malaysia. Today uh, we have two instructors. First, um, Mrs. Judith John Baptist and Mr. Hafsan Sani Bin Hafsa. Thank you for coming. For um, today, uh, we have we actually have um, a, drif a different group of uh, performers coming from um, Samporna, Sabah, Malaysia. If I can just um, show you the map of um, Malaysia. Uh, here is Malaysia. Um, and then this is uh, the state of Sabah. And the highlighted area is uh, Samporna, which uh, all the performers come from. And uh, those people are um, Bajau community which uh, they resides in Saporna for a very long time. And then Bajau in general are linguistically and culturally diverse group in the southern Philippines, coastal area of Sabah and also in the eastern Indonesia. In Sabah, we, we, we do have uh, uh, two locations which uh, the Bajau lives. Uh, sorry, that's not the map. <laughs> we, we, we have the East Coast Bajau, which uh, that these people are coming from in Sampurna and then we have the West Coast, West Coast Bajau where um, it's, it's the western part of the uh, state of Sabah. And then in Sampurna, the Bajau in Sampurna are generally from uh, two different kind of groups which are the Sea Bajau and the Land Bajau. The Sea Bajau known as uh, Bajau Laut or here uh, or in uh, Osama di Laut and um, they also have Bajau Kubang or land Bajau or landed Bajau who uh, lives uh, or dispersed along the shorelines um, in Sabah and known as Bajau Kubang. So, majority of them are Muslims, but uh, their worldview is still pre-Islamic. They still practice uh, syncretic of uh, religious uh, belief and the uh, traditional beliefs, and they still practice uh, rituals um, to, to appease their ancestors, their spirits, uh, and everything. And they also play Tagungo Ensemble as uh, their main instruments, uh, musical instruments, and also they dance. Then the dance is called Igal. Bye. So this is the uh, Kampung Bangau Bangau, uh, where the Bajau Laut uh, lives in Sampurna. But the Bajau, the land Bajau in Sampurna lives uh, all around Sampurna. They are everywhere. And also the Bajau, they are also everywhere also. But, but then the Bajau, the sea Bajau are more center in this uh, village. Okay, in terms of um, practicing the dance and music, um, they have it in the rituals, in their social occasions, such as uh, circumcisions and weddings. And also uh, they have... Uh, their own uh, purpose, objective, their own uh, function uh, to perform music and dance for their specific rituals. And if I if if uh, I hand it to Miss Judith, who can also talk about their worldview, their ritual practices in in Sabah. Good morning. Okay, good morning everyone. Okay, um, as uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Abzan, explained just now that uh, there are two uh, uh, Bajau people. One is the Bajau Kubang and one is the Bajau uh, Laut or Samadhi Laut. And uh, the worldview actually is uh, more, uh, what do you call that, uh, the practice of pre-Islamic is very much uh, toward the Bajau Laut and uh, represented by Haja Intan. Yeah, Intan, silakan berdiri dulu. Berdiri, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. She's also uh, our toko, or we call it our heritage uh, uh, master, masters, uh, uh, 
Masters on Dance, actually awarded by the Malaysian government under the purview of the uh, Heritage Department based in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, um, uh, as uh, Mr. Abzan was saying that uh, there are various uh, traditional ritual that has been uh, uh, still been practiced among the Bajau. Uh, silakan duduk puan ini. Aja intan. Silak maaf ya. Um, uh, among the Bajau, uh, uh, sama di laut or si Bajau. One of them uh, is actually, I think Ade is going to present paper based on uh, the Matpa Igal Jin. Uh, actually, uh, and also, this is uh, ancestral uh, practice to honor the spirit, the spirit of uh, their ancestor. And they also have uh, what they call that an annual uh, rice uh, ceremony for newly harvest uh, rice. And also, they believe in uh, a lot of uh, what you call that uh, traditional healing. If uh, they've been diagnosed by a certain illness and cannot be uh, sort of like um, healed by the normal hospital, they would consult a spirit medium. And uh, when um, if the spirit medium says that they need to have a ritual, then they would conduct a ritual to to sort of like to to heal uh, for he uh, for healing. And they also believe in. Um, uh, what they call it, uh, a langkapan, uh, a sort of like a heritage that they inherit uh, uh, in the form of, uh, what they call that, in the form of uh, 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 go, uh, gong, uh, and also a costume, and the whole, uh, and also plate, where they use for the ritual, and they believe that all these um, material or uh, a, a heritage uh, material that they inherit from the ancestor is imbued with spirit so um, and again they also have a special uh, ritual which um, they often uh, perform for the spirit medium they call it matpai uh, galjin where they will uh, sort of like uh, perform this ritual every three months during the full moon so okay uh, i give it back to mr abzan regarding the performance thank you okay in terms of uh, performance and its performativity they they practice their dance and music a lot it's almost like every day and every month and every year um in a traditional performance they perform in their village where they perform in front of the bride and groom during weddings and they, they perform in the rituals. But they also perform this kind of dance and music in the festivals um, which is uh, organized by the government, state government. This is a very huge festival that all that people all around, around Samporna and also tourists come to this festival to watch their performing arts in this festival. If um, we can just uh, show you a little bit of uh, how the dance is performed with the music. Boleh kita minta Mas Intan dulu? Boleh. Ida Limbayan. Boleh. Dengan bola bola. Dengan music. Boleh. Okay. Um. Ah, boleh juga. Okay. Um. Here, Miss Intan here will show you just a little bit of Igal Tabawan. One of the repertoire that uh, they have it in 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 their village, no facing sana. <laughs> One of the repertoire, Igal Tabawan, and she will perform with a paraphernalia or dance property called the bola bola. So the bola bola here is a wooden castanet that that the dancer hold it in their palm and clap it during the, their dancing. This is a very uh, wonderful and a very uh, hard to master and. Normally in Semporna, only skillful dancers perform this kind of dance, especially uh, in uh, Igal Tabawan. So this, when the dance is performed using the bola bola, the dance is called Igal Tabawan Mak Bola Bola. So the Tabawan means uh, um, the, musician, the musician will play the music called Titik Tabawan. So the dance reflects the music. So whatever the music is called, like say uh, Titik Tabawan, uh, the music called Tabawan, so the dance will call Igal Tabawan. So if the music is called Iga, eh, sorry, Limbayan or Titik Limbayan, the dance will be called Iga Limbayan, something like that. So, boleh? Yeah.
Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Intan. Why, why am, am I standing? <laughs> okay, that's a wonderful dance called Igal Tabawan Mak Bola Bola. Bear in mind that Igal is normally performed with bare hands, where the dancers flick their hands and move their palms and shoulder with a very uh, um, nice posture and um, uh, good uh, uh, gesture and standing position. So now uh, let us look at how the dance is performed without the bola bola. So the, the dance in the village is, perf is normally performed, is usually performed uh, in a very spontaneous and improvisational. So the dancers are just go with the flow, go whatever they like, just spontaneous and imp improvise according to the music and according to the feeling. Okay, um, let me tell you a little bit about the movement of uh, this uh, Tabawan dance. Actually, um, it is believed that uh, this Tabawan, Igal Tabawan, is originally from the island of Tabawan in southern Philippines. As you know, there is a, a lot of cross-border and cross-culture between southern Philippines and also in the east coast of Sabah. Um, okay. This particular dance is also used during wedding or during any social gathering and also during circumcision, circumcision and also during katam koraan or what do you call it in, in, in English? Uh, like uh, that you uh, complete that can recite the Quran completely. Is that something like that? Eh? Okay, the music accompanying this performance is uh, faster or slower music and they can they improvise the movement according to the uh, velocity of the music so if the music is faster then they will sort of like uh, uh, make the movement more a little bit aggressive for the ladies but in terms uh, in uh, as for the male you can see it's more more aggressive but if the music is slow if the velocity of the music is slow then they will move gracefully and um, they will, uh, what do you call it, depending on how they move and bend or curve the arm ra uh, then rather than the shoulder. For the ladies, uh, for the female dancers, it is very impolite to move too much on the shoulder. But the skill of the dancer is actually depend on how much they can bend in this within the shoulder, the length of the hand here. And, um, and also, they maintain the balance they have, if they are very skilled dancer, they know how to maintain the balance, and they cannot move too much of the hip. If they move too much of their uh, of of their hip, meaning to say, is they're very impolite dancer. So they have to really control and maintain at the same time, and grows. I mean, sort of like uh, improvise the movement music more from the inner part of uh, the feel. The feel must be from inside. And the stamina must be from the inner body, and the dancer must be able to move with the rhythm of the music. And there is no choreography. Uh, in, in, the, in the village, we, they don't have choreography. Choreography is only done when they have a 
festival or they have a sort of like a official function on stage and base um, and then the, uh, but uh, if they perform must be totally based on the person's skill and stamina and the eye movement is actually it's very impolite to have a direct contact with the audience but rather the sort of like they just mingle around looking at the movement of the hand so thank you Ade I mean um, Abzan you have any mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you um, so you you already saw a performance by women on how women express the movement gestures with the accompaniment of Tagungguk music. Now, let us look at how the male dancer performed the dance in a, ver in a different repertoire. So, boleh? Um, um, Izan, okay. Izan dengan J. Okay, so you will now look at how Igal Tabawan, the same Igal that you saw just now, the same Igal, the same dance that you just saw, performed by men. I, I hope uh, all of you can notice that the, fri the difference in the movement gestures and its structures, especially with the leg movement that is uh, like sliding and stomping on the floor. And then, if, uh, if I may, we could move to the other uh, genre of uh, dance in Sampurna. Uh, so this kind of dance is a uh, martial arts kind, kind of dance that is called Kuntau. Or Igal Kuntau, that uh, the music is the, the music accompanying this dance is called Lakbana, but then the dance is is still called Kuntau. It doesn't call uh, Igal Lakbana. No, right? Bukan Igal Lakbana. No, it's not Igal Lakbana. Even though the music is called Titik Lakbana, the dance is called Kuntau because it originates from a martial arts called Kuntau.
So um, the dance that you have uh, uh, saw just now is uh, just one type of uh, kuntau that they have, which called a strima. It's about um, moving to the corner. If, if, if you notice that the dancer move forward to the left and to the right and to the back. Uh, it is aggressive and uh, with a different movement of the hands. If you notice that he uses um, gestures like punching and grappling and blocking in, in, in the movement. Okay, now the other repertoire is called uh, Igal Tari Rai, performed with the bola bola, uh, a wooden castanet, bola bola instrument, and with the accompanying music, Titik Tari Rai. Um, let me tell you a little bit background about this dance. Actually, this dance is actually inspired when uh, one uh, fisherman uh, walking along the coastal and collecting seashell along the shore and step on a small eel and become ticklish. As you can see, she has to uh, lift her feet up and down, left or right, depending on the movement. And um, then the feet move uh, spontaneously. That is called sintak taliaga. Sintak taliaga. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the music is called uh, 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 titik tarirai, and the dance is called uh, um, igal tarirai. Igal tarirai. And um, it's performed using wooden castanet. Either it's made from bamboo. This one bamboo. Huh? Bamboo or also uh, no, it's a b uh, also iron wood. Okay, iron wood, and the dancer must have a right skill and must be a very strong stamina because it's involved a lot of uh, movement spontaneously with the leg and also with the movement. I mean, clapping of the wood. Okay, thank you. So um, <coughs> most of you must have wonder how does this dance perform in the village. So we don't have the village here, but we do have the video. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a little bit, uh, just a short clip of how Igal is performed during the weddings. So you can see the bride and groom dancing together. It, it is uh, normally compulsory for the bride and groom to perform for the audience. And then the audience come into the uh, space to slit in money to honor the, uh, the, the performer. And then this is how Igal is performed at the festival in Sampurna.
Uh, as you can see that uh, this kind of performance is a choreographed version which is uh, very different in a village uh, setting that the choreographer has arranged the dance, uh, the dance sequence into a set of sequence so that the dancers can perform uh, in a very uh, um, interesting way to the audience. It, it's all uh, choreographed for the eye of the audience. Okay, I think that's enough. Eh? Okay. Now we have look at um, two different genres bit in between the same genre. The slow and sullen and the quite aggressive and quite fast. How about something much more uh, faster and much more aggressive with uh, 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 spear and shields? So they are going to perform another repertoire called Igal Sayau, which is a, a tribal warfare dance that uh, symbolizing a war of a performer and a warrior. So normally warriors uh, who win the war will have ritual conducted by the villagers of the winning tribe and they will imitate how the war begins and how they fought and won the war. Okay, they, they are supposed to have a spear, but but uh, they don't have it now. But it's okay; they can uh, mimic the, the the movement. But you can watch the performance with the uh, spear tomorrow, tomorrow if, tomorrow afternoon. Okay, okay. While we are waiting for the spear, so after the war, uh, they are, they are ce celebrating the the the. the the winning and the performance will begin. And then women will welcome them with the limbayan dance, Igal Limbayan, uh, um, accompanied with the uh, limbayan music. So this dance originated from uh, Kubang Bay, now known as Kampung Kubang in the Bumbum Island. So uh, in the dance, they fight using the spear and shield or kris. Um, so the music accompanying this dance is called Lakbana. And also the, the, the music is also used for ritual healing or ritual music. While on stage, uh, the dancers uh, normally go on, on trance and stamp their feet on the ground to make a sound. For stage performance, the dancers may use a mask uh, and the music is hard palpitating from the drum. Okay. Thank you very much. 
So now we have, we have talked about uh, the ritual performance and the performance during the social occasions and also the performance during the festivals in the Regatta Lepa Festival. So now I'm going to show you just a little bit, a little bit of a video clip of a ritual uh, in uh, Kampung Bangau Bangau, Bangau Bangau Village in Sempurna Sabah. So the ritual is held during night time, during the full moon. So now uh, we are now seeing a spirit medium. Uh, uh, she was performing, and the spirit medium is called uh, the female spirit medium is called Jin Lela, while the male spirit medium is called uh, Jin, sorry, Jin Denda for sp female spirit medium, and the male spirit medium here now performing is called Jin Lela. So normally they, they, they perform the eagle dance and they go into trance. So now uh, this spirit medium is performing eagle lelang in the Makpai Galjin ritual. So this ritual is uh, uh, held during the full moon and no other lights are allowed. So it's very dark and uh, I hope you can see a little bit of the video. Um, I guess we, we have come to the end of our um, lecture and demonstrations now. We, 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 can, we can go all day uh, for the discussion and we, we, we encourage uh, questions and answer if you have. Maybe um, before we have the Q and A, uh, uh, can we invite dancers uh, uh, to perform one more time the Igal Tabawan freestyle? Or anybody want to participate and learn with them? F feel free to join. Any mail? Okay, yeah.
Hey, thank you, thank you very much. So um, we open to the floor for Q and A. Any question? For improv improvisation, yeah. do you have any anything fixed? Improvisation. Yeah, why improvisation? Um, why, why improvisation? Why improvisation? Uh, anything fixed? Improvisation. Yeah. Okay. In terms, of movement, in terms of movement structure, the movement structure for the performance, specific perf specifically in the uh, village setting, normally they the performers did not set anything, but then the structure is very clear that the dancers will enter the dance space with the angalimbayan tangan. With a specific movement for the entrance and to get out from the space. For the hand movement and for the leg movement during the performance, it depends on the skill of the dancer. Whoever has the best or better skills, they will perform better. So uh, most amateur or beginner dancer will perform slightly much uh, much much more or less um, just a normal person uh, perform the dance okay maybe but we will demonstrate with the dancers basic okay um silakan pertama lah macam mana masuk kan kita yang pertamanya yeah um uh, uh, angalimbai uh, yeah okay okay this is this movement is called angalimbai or waving of the hand or and as the curve of the finger is called coles coles okay and then this is coles and you bend slightly and uh, when you make to the neck move you lift your feet very 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 low as possible female cannot lift the feet too high it's very rude to lift the feet uh, and then uh, if she make movement, she was, uh, what do you call it, uh, lift the feet to the back and push to the back. Yeah. Ini uh, Aji dipanggil apa yang kalau yang kaki? Anintak. Anintak. Anintak means stamping of the feet. Yeah. These are the basic structure. And then, um, but um, new choreography is also been introduced. Yang duduk tu, yang uh, duduk. See, before. They never have this sitting down on the floor, but now modern choreography has been uh, sort of like adapt to this kind of movement. But as you can see, the hand movement is still the same, and coles yang pergi dalam dan keluar tu pario apa angalebot and ah inner movement of the hand uh, toward inside the body, body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, body. Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, okay. Okay. And then the As you can see they put the feet left, right, left, right and stem the feet. Apa panggil kalau kaki? Angengke, angengke. Angengke, angengke. This is angengke. So it's actually very gracefully uh, done, performed uh, with, uh, of course, a slight smile. That will be Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh. Hello. Is there any uh, signification of the music instrument, uh, the sound of music instrument in the dance? Sorry. Sorry. Can, you Sorry. Can you repeat the question? Hello. Uh, is there any signification of the uh, the sound of the instrument uh, musical? C instrument certification? Uh, in, in signification. Signification of yes. the music. Uh, instrument, the sound of the music instrument in the dance. Kekuatan dia di mana yang yang. Kekuatan dia. Yeah. Tergantung kepada semantik. 
It depends on the uh, uh, energy and the tempo of the music itself. But then the dancers, it depends on the dancers actually. I have uh, interviewed some dancers in Semporna. Uh, some of them depends on the drums. Some of them depends on the cooling tangan here. And then, but, but, but no dancers depends on the uh, uh, gong. Uh, but but um, all of the instruments are significant to the dance. But then it depends on the dancer to refer to which uh, sound to dance. Does it answer your question or you want more? <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other question? Are there any uh, prohibition for the dancer? Uh, prohibition. Apa yang tidak digalakkan dalam tarian? Dilarang. For the female, you are totally not allowed to lift your feet higher than here. The the joint, ah, huh? okay, yeah. And you cannot uh, facing backward toward the audience. It's very, very, very rude. And you cannot shake too much the shoulder. If it's like you know now there is a modern choreography, uh, the influence of Hindustani music, that tends to move too much yes. the shoulder, and people will judge you among the villagers that she is or he is a very, very unprofessional dancer. <laughs> Okay. Excuse me, another one okay, question. Okay. I, I saw the male performer show always tap. Stamping uh, on stabbing, tapping on, on the, uh, depend on the gong. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, um, the stamping of the feet is also uh, uh, according to the velocity of the music. If the music is faster, they, 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 st they tend to stamp their feet faster. And also um, uh, to show how skilled they are, you know, for male dancer. But the stomping is very tiring. Yeah. But uh, to be a good male dancer in Sampurna, you have to have a great stamina to perform eagle with the stomping and, uh, and fast uh, hand movements. But it's very tiring, and normally they just perform like uh, less than two minutes, and then they go off the stage. Yeah, just to add in also, uh, the villagers will be able to judge whether you are a good f uh, male dancer or not by looking at the movement of your inner stamina, because it shows. That's why this dance, especially the certain music repertoire, when they play, people can go into trance. So, for example. Um, Mahmoud here, whenever uh, they play the music called Titik Jauti, which is actually for the uh, spirit medium, people have the tendency to be into trance. Hmm? Okay. Boleh ko, uh, I'll show you the sample. Uh, titik Jauti. Yeah, for healing ritual. But not too long. We don't want him to be in trance. <laughs> You can see the the male dancer. They are able. They 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 can show their hip too much, but not for the female dancers. Yeah. Any other Thank you. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. To end up uh, in our in Bajau language, thank you, Matsukur. Kapunkrap in Thai. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Miss Judith. Ah, uh, no, sorry, Judith John Baptist and Mr. Hapsand Sani Bin Hamsa. Thank you very much for joining us today.